In September of 2013, unprecedented rain flooded six different river corridors, causing destruction to homes, businesses, and more than 400 miles of Colorado highways. In 2022, the Colorado Department of Transportation finished the final permanent repair project from the floods. This is the story of building the road to resiliency. From 2013 to 2022, it took more than 200 individual projects, $750 million, and coordination with more than 30 counties, municipalities, and other stakeholders to fully recover from the floods. It has been a journey nobody wanted to take, but one that nobody backed down from. I think it's a really cool uh, chapter. It's almost like reading a really good book where um, you were glad you read it and it coming to an end is a really good thing, but you're almost like, what am I gonna do with my free time now that I don't, <laughs> don't have that really nice book to read? I've been away from the, the flood project itself for so long now, um, working on other, other major projects. And so um, I feel like I had kind of closed that out for me a while back when I left, um, not even realizing it. But uh, when I come back now, it's crazy to me. It seems like a whole lifetime ago when I started down that path on the 34 project. I use that as kind of my milestone in my career so far. So for me, uh, being a part of this effort and a part of the team here at CDOT to put this recovery effort together, it, it's been the highlight of my career. I just, I don't have any other words for the amazing things that my team and others have done and to just be a part of it. It's, um, it's a gift. I, I think we're in a lot better place than we were nine years ago. I think the work that's gone into it is not in vain. Um, and proud to be part of the team that put that together and made it come to fruition. It just talks to the magnitude of how much work this really was. That you had teams of people, you had just different organizations everywhere just working around the clock and then eventually you do scale that back and it's, I mean, we're still going today. So it, it's, it just talks to the magnitude of the event in my opinion. The amount of work that was accomplished and what we did um, in nine years is honestly, I mean, I have been told from FHWA that the size of the program, we're the fastest that anyone has ever done, has recovered this quickly. It's nice to, to close that chapter. Um, I can tell you the Canyon people who like to be left alone are very happy that we are closing that chapter. Um, and I think we've learned so much from it that we're just, we're, we're, we're better for it. And
but it's just a good, a good reminder, especially just different milestones to see that we're finally finishing up all the permanent repairs. It's just, it's good to go back and, and look at, look at and celebrate the accomplishment, uh, to, to celebrate it and to celebrate the individuals. The, but to be completely done with all of it and realize to step back and look at what a big, um, what a big accomplishment that is. The 100 year nature or 500 year nature of those events are really what they are and we don't see one again but uh, you know that these events are becoming more and more common and we're seeing them uh, happen. I, I hope that the resiliency measures that have been made in all the canyons uh, don't ever have to be shown to be effective but I, if they do I, I'm pretty confident in the engineering that went behind it that we'll be able to get people out safely in the future. You know, I, I feel really proud to be able to, to have been involved from the start of this disaster, and now I have the very last uh, permanent repair project on, on State Highway 7. So the projects that we've been able to accomplish, it, it, it makes me proud. It, it makes me feel like we've done the right thing for the state of Colorado, we've done the right things for our communities, and. It's just pride, you know. I just I chose this line of work because I, I want to do things that benefit the community I live in. And, um, you know, I don't think there's any greater example in my body of work than, than what we did after the flood. The states learned a lot about how to handle the emergencies and, and how to rebuild better. Um, I know in the future we're not going to lose as much stuff. So I think it, it brings three thoughts to my mind. I, I still have um, sadness, if you will, thinking that people lost their lives in this event. Um, people lost property, there was a lot of tragedy. Um, but I also then feel proud that I was able to be part of this process throughout and was able to play a role in looking at and seeing how the roads were built back the way they should be. Um, and I think the last thing is, is knowing that I've built lifetime friendships throughout this whole event. Water doesn't respect engineers. They, you know, it's it's going to go. Um, I think from 1976 and 2013, we've we've learned lessons, and hopefully, you know, it'll it'll make the next one go a little bit better.
it may not have happened over a weekend, it didn't even happen in one year. And so people can forget, maybe until we revisit it, just what went into that and how many people contributed to something like that. But to me, it really is a, an accomplishment that I think we're gonna look back and say that was, a, that was a once in a generation accomplishment. That was something on the order of a Glenwood Canyon. That was something that it took so many people to come together over such a long period of time. But at the end result, you've got this testament in our roadways. You know, I feel most mostly grateful. Um, grateful I got to be involved. Grateful to work with the people I got to work with. Um, grateful to be able to help. This might be one of the more impactful project or series of projects to ever be involved in as an engineer. When do you get to do something where you have a direct and very obvious impact in a good way on people's day-to-day -day lives?